If you go before God and you are not prepared for prayer, what you will do before God is to try to make God sorry for you. So you try to make yourself pitiful. You think God will answer your prayer because you cried a lot. Or the amount of uh, makamasi coming out, God will look at this and say, Bana Ange, okay, just give them, they are over crying. No. God is not moved by pity. God is moved by faith. God is moved by? God is moved by? Say, faith moves God. Not pity. Faith moves God. Not pity. Every court of every court must be moved. A judge does not wake up and decide by himself that there's something wrong here. I need to convene a case and help this person is being swindled. Even if a judge knows what is happening is wrong. There must be somebody who goes to court to move the court. The court cannot move what he calls Suomoto. The court cannot move by it, him, itself. Am I talking? The court cannot move by itself. The court cannot make a decision because I have, we have seen something wrong there. The court is now deciding by itself. No. There must be somebody to complain. There must be somebody to show where the law is being broken. That's why if you don't pray, even though God knows something wrong is going on, you won't do anything about it. Because God is a judge. And he can't move by himself. A court cannot move by itself. Even now. You must go to court. Am I talking? Even if the judge is your neighbor, and the judge can see you are being uh, swindled, the judge will say, follow the court process. There's a process that will allow me to intervene. Not just by myself. Say understand. Say understand. Say understand. So prayer is what moves the hand of the court to intervene in your behalf. So when we call for a prayer meeting here and you don't appear, even though you, God can see your things going wrong, he's a judge, nothing can move. You must come here, enter the court of heaven, Present your case, produce evidence, and receive verdict. They are here. Now, when you go to God in the courthouse, you present your evidence. You bring your witnesses. You win the case. The Bible says, the ancient of days sat down. This is the book of Daniel chapter 10. The courts were convened, and the ancient of days sat down. And the verdict was given in the favor of the saints. Now, I want to conclude this segment. We shall continue next week. When you go to court, what you receive really is not an answer to your prayer. You receive a court order. In court, you are not given answers. What are you given? Court order. The judge will give the verdict in your favor. You are the one to extract that verdict, get an order through it. It is, there's a second step that Christians miss. Daniel 7.22 says, Until the ancient of days came, and judgment was made in favor of the saints, most high. And the time came for the saints to possess the kingdom. I give judgment in your favor tonight. I said I give judgment in your favor tonight. In the precious name of Jesus Christ. In the precious name of Jesus Christ. Judgment shall be released in your favor. In the wonderful name of Jesus. So when you go to the courthouse of heaven. First of all.
your lawyer appears for you. That's why you must understand the name of Jesus. Is that okay? You must understand the name of? Because you pray in the name of? When you pray in the name of Jesus, in heaven it is Jesus who appears. Am I talking? But you must pray in the name of Jesus legally. What does that mean? You cannot say in the name of Jesus, then say something he didn't tell you to say. A thief cannot pray in the name of Jesus, I'm going to steal. I must not be caught. This prayer cannot be made in the name of Jesus because it is not part of what Jesus said. Your lawyer is there to give you instructions on what is possible and what is not possible within the law. They are here. So the name of Jesus is not a blank check to just say the name of Jesus for whatever nonsense you want. That is number one. Number two, you must have clean hands. You cannot come to the court. There's a maxim of law that says he who comes for equity, who comes to the court, must have himself clean hands. Am I talking? You can't go to the courts and your own hands are dirty. You are also a criminal. You must make sure my own part is clean before I go to look for justice. Wezi kwa meua mtu wapa. Alafu naenda kwa kiuzi mungine. Am I talking? The Bible says, who shall ascend to the hill of the Lord? He who has clean hands. He whose hands are clean. So even this is in law. Your hands must be clean. Equity will favor those who go to court with clean hands. If you go to court with dirty hands, first they arrest you. You must clear your own part first before you accuse anybody else. This is why we do a lot of repentance before going into warfare. To make sure our own hands are clean. Who may ascend into the hill, Psalm 24? Who may ascend into the hill of the Lord? Or who may stand in his holy place? He who has clean hands and a pure heart. Who has not lifted up as his soul to an idol, nor sworn deceitfully. So equity will favor those who have clean hands. You cannot go to equity and your hands are also dirty. Equity will favor those who know their rights. If you don't know your rights, it is not the job of the judge to teach you your rights. You must go find out what your rights are. Do you understand? So the Bible says, my people perish. Why? Because of lack of knowledge. They don't know their rights, so they are perishing. You must read, find out what are my rights concerning this case before you go to equity. The fact that you don't know your rights can make you lose a case. Judge knows this is, you should have come under this section, under this section. You are coming under the wrong section and you lose this case. Say, I understand. When you go before the judge, you get a court order. After, and you have the court orders, now you can be given enforcers. People who enforce court orders. In the heavenly places, they're called angels. They're called who? They're called who? But it is your duty to serve this court order to the enemy. If you don't serve the court order to the enemy, the enemy will remain in place even though you already have a court order. If you don't take the court order to the enemy, the enemy will continue oppressing you even though you have been to God and you have got a court order. So I want to conclude this segment by saying this. There are two kinds of prayer. One, the prayer you pray to God. The prayer you pray where? This prayer makes you be justified. The Bible says, declare thou that thou mayest be justified. This prayer justifies you. A verdict is given in your favor. You are justified. 
You are declared not guilty. You are justified. You have declared before God and you have been justified. So when you go before God, you receive the word of God. A rema word. Prayer, when people go before the king, it's not what they tell the king that is more important. It is what the king tells them. A lot of us go to tell God things, and when it is time for God to speak, we are already late. We have to rush somewhere. It is not what you tell God, really, that is important, because God already knows what you need before you ask him. You're just presenting before him to complete the legal process. But it is what he tells you that will change things, not what you tell him. So a lot of prayer should be listening to God. We talk too much. After you have talked to God, one, allow him time also to talk to you. When you go for prayer, carry a notebook, carry something. That will allow you to note down what also God has told you in this prayer session. They are here. They are here. Now, what you get from God is what we call the Rema word of God. This is the verdict of the case you have presented. This is the court order that you will carry. What do you do with the court order? You don't keep it in your house. You go to where the enemy is. Isaiah 43, 26 says, put me in remembrance. In other words, can you give your legal precedence? Eh? Say, put me in remembrance. So God says, when you come, make me remember the case, bring case studies, bring, bring case law. Put me in remembrance. Let us plead together. Declare thou that thou may be justified. So when you declare before God, God responds with, yes, you are justified. You are right in this thing. You have followed the law. You have got the correct case law. Verdict, favor. But it doesn't end there. A lot of Christians end here. It doesn't end here. They come out, I've prayed. I've received a word from the Lord. I have received. I'm okay. You have just received a court order. There must be a next step. This next step is presenting the court order to the enemy now. This is now not, be to, not praying to God. This is demanding of the enemy by virtue of the court order that he must leave your premises. The Bible says, if you say unto this mountain, be thou removed and cast into the sea, and you don't doubt in your heart. Okay. If you're not doubting in your heart, that means you have what? How did you get this faith? How did you get this faith? We, the word of God is called by the rhema of God. So after you have gone into God's presence, you come out with faith. You come out with faith through the rhema word that you'll hear him speaking to you. Now, this is the rhema word that will allow you not to doubt when you are facing your mountain. If you don't have this rhema word, it doesn't matter which mountains you face, you will doubt. So here. So you must spend time in God's presence. You must spend time praying before him. You must spend time releasing the case studies before him. After you have released, he will speak to you a rema word. He will quicken a scripture in you. He will give direction. Now, when you have this rema word, now you go with this rema word, you are now justified. You go before your enemy. Now you have faith. You will not doubt in your heart. You say to the mountain, be thou removed and cast into the sea. And you don't doubt in your heart. You will see your mountain removed. I see every mountain living your way. In the precious name of Jesus. I see long-standing mountains being uprooted. In the wonderful name of Jesus Christ. In the precious name of Jesus. So when you see sick people come here, do you see me say, oh God, heal this one? I never pray like this. Somebody has come. They have this pain everywhere, cancer, what? 
Do you see me kneel down? Oh God, this one, this one. No. Why? I already finished that part. I don't come to the altar until that part is finished. So when I come here, it is the second part. I'm just seeing mountains I'm removing. Am I talking? This one is sick. Out! This one is not. In the name of Jesus, come out! This one is demon. Out! Why? I am already carrying the rema. This is, when you are facing the mountain, it's not the time to go and see, oh, God. no, no, no. You must have already finished that courthouse part. You must now have angels of God who are coming with you to enforce the court order. They are here. So a lot of brethren have piles and piles of court orders they have been gathering. But they have never served to the enemy. The court order concerning your family, we are serving it today. Concerning your finances, we are serving it today. Concerning your health, you are serving it today. Concerning that piece of land you have been contending for, we are serving it today. Concerning your promotion, we are serving it today. In the precious name of Jesus. I said in the precious name of Jesus. In the precious name of Jesus. When you serve the court order, it is the duty of angels to go and execute that court order and remove that squatter from your farm. No squatter shall live on your life again. Every squatter is served with notice right now. Vacate the farms of the people. Every illegal title deed is revoked in Jesus' name. In the precious name of Jesus. Let your life go free. 